Okay. So today, hopefully, we'll we'll finish the proof of uh, point free duality. Um, yeah. So yeah, we'll start with a review of what we you know uh, have proved or you know sketched proofs of so far, and uh, then I'll talk about um, decompositions of smooth manifolds into handles, which are sort of like um, a manifold version of CW complexes. And then we'll prove point free duality. Okay. So last time we talked about the orientation bundle. And as a set, the total space is just the union over points in the manifold of the uh, homology of the manifold, the nth homology of the manifold, rel the manifold minus that point. Uh, you know, and last time we talked about how to topologize this. Um, yeah, you don't want to. Give it the distant union topology, you want some topology where nearby M's have nearby fibers. And then there's a projection map where you just send um, homology in, um, yeah. Um, I should have been smart. Hatcher, I think, names this pair or something, because this, the name, this thing is too long for me to say. It sends a homology class in M rel M minus M to uh, M, there's too many M's. Um, yeah, so that's a projection map. And so this is called the orientation bundle and a manifold is orientable if and only if this bundle is trivial, that's the, the definition. Okay. Oh yeah, um, in chat Manuel said like, we'll call this the local homology around a point. That sounds like a good a good name. Okay. Uh, is, Manuel, is that a standard name or is that a name you just made up? I think I've heard this. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. So I think, yeah. Um, yeah. H Hatcher definitely has some notation for it, but I don't, I, it's not, there isn't like a super well-established notation or name for this. Okay. Uh, yeah. And so the most general version of Poincaré duality um, that I'm aware of, at least for let's say compact manifolds with boundary is the following. Um, so we have a compact manifold um, with boundary and we're gonna write the boundary as a union of X and Y. And the homology of M rel X is the N minus ith cohomology of M rel Y with coefficients in the um, orientation bundle. And so, uh, you know, you might be like, well, why do I care about these more general versions? The more general versions are, in some sense, slightly easier to prove. So, you know, even if you only care about the case where it's orientable and no boundary, so in which case you take X and Y to both be empty, and uh, then these twisted coefficients would be untwisted, this, you know, more general version is easier to is easier to prove. Um, and like, so usually you'll think that like either X will be empty and Y will be all of the boundary or vice versa. But you know, if you felt like putting part of your boundary on one side and the other part on the other side, you know, you can do it. And in fact, you know, probably you can generalize it. So this isn't even a disjoint union, but like a union and they intersect assuming, um, you know, reasonable points at topological conditions don't have X be a Cantor set, probably. Although maybe it's fine. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna prove this using um, space level, uh, or you know, space level, we're gonna prove this by proving space level homology and space level cohomology are equivalent. So um, there's a claim, so if you have a, um, you have a fiber bundle, uh, then there's a bundle of groups that I'm going to call E pi n, whose fiber over um, point B is naturally just the nth homotopy group of the fiber. And, um, you know, I guess we didn't prove this, but you can prove this similar to how you'd prove um, the thing for um, untwisted coefficients and mapping spaces. The uh, ith homotopy group of the space of sections of P. 
So these are maps, uh, which you should think of as, you know, this is a twisted version of maps from B into the fiber. Uh, the homotopy groups of this space of sections are the homology with twisted coefficients and like these coefficients. Oh yeah, so this is a bundle with fiber island or plane space. Um, yeah. I, I changed notation from last time because I didn't like the notation last time, but I stated this theorem last time. Any questions or just like things I should repeat? Great. So, yeah. Uh, so the section space will be our model of cohomology, or a space of sections will be our model of cohomology, and um, a free abelian group on the space will be our model of homology. Yeah. Um, so our goal is to find a bundle that I'm going to call K orient, um, orientation bundle N, M. Um, so and the fibers are going to be um, KZNs. Um, and the, and such that there's going to be like a natural, uh, homotopy equivalence between the, um, the homotopy groups of the fibers and the local homology. So, you know, you could just say, okay, let's just take the trivial bundle of fiber KZN. Um, and you know, then the, the fibers, um, will have nth homotopy group Z and like this group is isomorphic to Z but there won't be a natural isomorphism necessarily. So we want the bundle to be twisted so that the fibers are sort of naturally isomorphic to the local homology or the nth homotopy groups of the fibers. Okay. Um, yeah, so what we're gonna want is we're gonna want a new, or it's gonna be convenient to have a slightly different model of the um, orientation bundle. Um, yeah, so we'll let M be a manifold, and then, so I'm going to describe this new model heuristically, and then for um, smooth manifolds, I'll tell you how to construct it. But the, the idea is that for each, um, each M, we're uh, in the manifold, we're going to pick a small disk around the manifold, DM, and um, you know, let's say it's a closed disk, and SM will be the boundary sphere. And then this orientation bundle superscript D will be a bundle whose fiber over M, so this will be a bundle of groups, is just um, the homology of DM rel SM. And you know, if you pick a disk around M, then the a closed disk around M, then uh, you know, excision lets you prove that the homology of the disk rel the boundary sphere is the same as the the local homology. So, you know, if you have some way of sort of continuously picking a disk in the manifold around each point, then you can, you know, build this bundle and it'll, there'll be a natural isomorphism with the orientation bundle defined earlier. Um, yeah, so the only thing that's sort of not rigorous here is like, how are we continuously picking a disk around each point and like, what does it mean to do that? But I think it's clear, like, if we have some way of doing that, then it will produce, a, it'll produce a, a, a bundle that's isomorphic to the one we had before. Um, but, like, this perspective will be useful for um, uh, constructing, you know, the scanning map to compare uh, homology and cohomology. J Jeremy, can you always do this? Uh, you probably can always do this. I'm just going to sketch how it isn't, isn't like taking local homology precisely the fix for this. Or maybe uh, well, not. I mean, there's, there's sort of the issue of like, um, I mean, I know if you have a metric or something, you can do it, but, um, yeah, anyway. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so I guess part of the problem is I guess like like re relative homology or, you know this like free abelian group construction uh, if you take the uh, like it doesn't always output rel the homotopy groups aren't always relative homology 
um, like they will be if you sort of include a CW complex, if like, the, you know, I'll just write like, um, you know, like pi i of z of x mod y. Or maybe I'm misinterpreting your question, but part of your question, I think, is just like, isn't the thing on the right way better than the thing on the left? Right, exactly. Reasons, because the thing on the right is is very natural, and the thing on the left is less natural. I mean, that would be my fix for if I cannot pick a continuously varying family of disks, I would say, oh, take these like M rel, M yeah. without a point, yeah. So what we're going to want is we're going to want to uh, like take free abelian groups. And so if you plug in like X is M and Y is M, uh, the manifold minus the point, then I don't think we have enough point set topological assumptions to get this isomorphism. Uh, because like the closure of Y uh, is too big. <clears throat> So we sort of, um, yeah, because like, at, at least from this configuration space perspective, like we sort of don't have, it's like we don't really have relative homology. It's like we have reduced homology of the quotient. So like relative homology is great. And like is the correct notion more generally than reduced homology of the quotient. So I sort of want a pair of spaces such that reduced homology of the quotient is what we want. And that's why, like, this pair is better than that pair. I see. Um, but if, if you have a, a triangulation, you're probably good, right? Uh, oh, like how you can pick the disks? Yeah. You're like, or if you if, 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 probably if you're good at manifolds, you could just always pick these disks. Oh, okay. But yeah, I'll I'll say how to do it in the smooth case. Um. Yeah, yeah, and it won't it won't be canonical. But you know, the, the thing with it, gr the green is canonical. The thing on the left is less canonical, but it has the nice property. You know that if you take the where you you can take the quotient. And then the homology of the quotient is the relative homology. That's true for the blue thing. It's not true for the green thing. And because we're using configuration spaces, sort of a similar thing shows up. Um, yeah, are there any other questions? OK. So like, how are we going to construct? Um, yeah, so what we want is we want this bundle of disks. So we want to construct this bundle I'm going to call DM. Uh, and the fibers are going to be DN. And this bundle is going to come with a section landing in the interior of each disk. Um, and we're going to want, so, you know, it has a projection map, but we're going to want this P tilde um, such that uh, the section composed with P tilde is the identity. And P tilde, um, when you restrict it to each fiber, gives uh, an embedding. Uh, yeah. Okay. So what's the, the picture? So you should think of this section. So what do we what do we want to do? We we want to pick this disk. Around each point, we want a disk that contains that point. Um, and so what does varying continuously mean? Well, why don't we put all of these disks in a bundle? Uh, so that's this DM. And then the section tells you. Um, like which, 
Maybe we don't need the section. Uh, embedding, uh, well, having the section is fine. Um, yeah, so, um, so, so, so what we have is like given each point in M, we have this abstract, we have the fiber, which is some abstract disk. And then we have this map, which identifies the, uh, the fiber, which is an abstract disk with an actual disk in M containing our, our point. Um, so this, this is like a way of making rigorous what like a continuously varying family of disks containing points in M sh should be. Any questions? Um, this isn't the Tom bundle, right? Because am I wrong about that? Or yeah, so the well, um, yeah. So there's this. Um, well, there, I mean, I guess a few things. So one, you could just say like, you know. You could just say, like, this is going to be the tangent bundle, you know, up to homeomorphism. Um, yeah, so one thing is, so, you know, there's a sphere bundle. The Tom bundle is going to be the quotient of the sphere bundle, not the disk bundle. So, like, that will be true. That is not, like, going to explicitly play a role in this theory. But yeah, is that your question? Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. The, yeah so, um, but you know, in the, the Tom Bundle case, it's not important to be able to compare points in the tangent bundle and points in the actual manifold. Whereas it will be from this perspective. Okay. So um so here's our sort of topological model of the orientation bundle. Um, so it's, um, yeah. So we're, we're gonna have this, um, uh, oh yeah, so like, let's say we've constructed this disk bundle. Um, we'll construct it out of the tangent bundle later. Um, so let's say we have this disk bundle. We're going to um, define this bundle that I'm going to call B superscript or B to the tangent bundle power of A. And it's a bundle whose fiber over a point M is um, the like A of the disk around M mod A of the sphere around M. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess maybe I shouldn't have given it this name until I say how to construct it using the tangent bundle. But what you should think of, I guess the the reason why it's um, called this is um, so like um, B and A for A discrete is um, you know is a a K A N, and uh, so it's like we're doing this construction but not um, for a single number n, but sort of for a bundle. So it's sort of, we get a, so the output isn't just one eilenberg McLean space, it's a um, bundle of eilenberg McLean spaces. Yeah. So, so what we do is, you know, given this bundle dm, w w uh, we build this new bundle whose fiber over point m is just um, the, uh, you know, a of the disk mod A of the sphere. And, you know, for A discrete, this is a bundle of island bergman McLean spaces, and the uh, the homotopy groups of, um, you know, when you plug in A is Z, the homotopy groups are naturally the fiber of this um, uh, disk bundle. You know, the fiber of this uh, disk model, the orientation bundle, because this is just going to be isomorphic to HN dm rel sm okay 
Any questions? I feel like that's a bad sign that there are no questions, but we'll move on. It might be clearer once I say how to construct these bundles. Okay. So, um, yeah, so if you apply our proposition earlier, it will say that the, um, the homotopy groups of this bundle are just the homology of M with coefficients in, um, sorry, the homotopy groups of this are just the cohomology of M with coefficients in the orientation bundle. Yeah. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to construct DM because I didn't, you know, I just said like, we want this bundle with these properties, but I didn't say how to build it. And then, you know, to prove one for duality, like that will finish the definition of the space. And then to prove one for duality, all we need to do is show that uh, the space of sections of this bundle is um, homotopy equivalent to uh, the configurations of points on in M with labels in A. Yeah. And then once we do that, you know, you specialize to A is Z and you get out one for duality. Any any questions? Okay, so um, we're just going to construct this for, for smooth manifolds. Um, you know, even though I'm pretty sure everything works for topological manifolds. Uh, so you know, recall like a, a smooth structure on a manifold is um, a collection of uh, in, embeddings of Rn into the manifold, such that um, whenever it's defined. The uh, composition of one, or the composition of one of these embeddings composed with the inverse of another embedding, is smooth. So what we're doing is, you know, we're covering the manifold by the image of these Rn's, and then this map gives you a map from an open subset of Rn, Rn. Um, so we know what smooth means means here. And then the other condition is that. Um, you know, the union of the images of these RNs is all about. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it turns out not all manifolds have a smooth structure. And I, you know, haven't defined what an equivalence of smooth structures is, but some manifolds have um, many different smooth structures. Okay. And, you know, much of, like, 1960s, 1970s topology was about um, classifying smooth structures. and or the, There's 28 smooth structures on S7 or something. That the right number? Okay. Uh, yeah, and so the uh, tangent bundle, you know, we pick these, um, you know, given a smooth structure, we um, uh, basically what we want to do is we want to uh, take our manifold and locally cross it with a copy of Rn, but we're gluing these Rn's together along the derivatives of um, of these embeddings. Yeah. So, um, yeah. We, but intuitively, you should just think that, um, like, if you oh. This is a true statement. If you embed your manifold into some big Euclidean space, um, you can, you know, the um, you can construct the tangent bundle just by sort of saying uh, at a given point, it's all of the, it's the affine subspace of your Euclidean space that that literally like lies tangent to your manifold. So if you if you pick an embedding, you can um, define it that way. But um, yeah. yeah, I guess here's a, a formula. So you know, just locally you you cross your manifold with R n, and then you move them together along the um, yeah. Okay, so this this is an example of a vector bundle. So what's a vector bundle? Um, so it's it's a fiber bundle. And um, so I guess I'm not defining a bundle with structure group, 
but I think this will work anyway. So, you know, it's a fiber bundle and um, all the fibers are homeomorphic to RN. And uh, for each fiber, you pick a choice of vector space structure on the fiber. Um, and then what, what you do, you know, the, the only requirement that you have is that um, you can pick these local trivializations, but now, you know, so you need to do that to make it um, a fiber bundle, but the extra condition you impose is that, um, you know, the inclusion of each fiber, uh, you know, so you include a fiber into a pre-image of one of these open sets in the base, and then um, the local trivialization identifies that with uh, the open set in the base cross Rn, and then you can project it down to Rn. Um, we're requiring that this composition is linear. It's necessarily a homeomorphism, so it will be an isomorphism. But um, yeah, so um, yeah, so it's a it's a choice of vector space structure on each fiber such that uh, you can pick local trivializations, making all of these um, maps linear. Okay, and um, so. I'm, crash course in what differential geometry is. So an, an inner product on a vector space is, um, you know, probably all of you of TA-265 or something, um, you know, so you've, you've thought this, is um, it's just a map from the vector space, tensor the vector space, um, that is, um, that's symmetric, and it's it's non-degenerate in the sense that um, if you plug in some uh, the same thing twice, it's not negative. And the only way that you or this is positivity, and then non-degenerate means you plug in something tensor itself. The only way that that can be zero is if the vector is zero. Okay, and um, you know the. Isomorphisms of vector spaces with inner product are called isometries, and uh, um, then um, you know an, an isometry is is an isomorphism that um, you know takes one of the inner products to the other one. Um, oh, I guess here I switched from inner product as a bilinear function as opposed to a function from the tensor product. Um, you, I guess if you're teaching 265, you wouldn't write tensor product, you'd write Cartesian product, and then you'd say the function is bilinear. So, you know, if you want, you can think of it that way. And, you know, the standard, um, the standard dot, the standard inner product in Rn is the dot product. Okay, so uh, a metric on a bundle is, well, on a vector bundle, so we want to pick, you know, we it's a vector bundle, so we pick a vector space structure on each fiber, and then we pick an inner product on each fiber, and then um, we, um, this is, I think this is right, um, we pick, um, the requirement is that we can pick local trivializations so that these ma the maps from the fibers to Rn are isometries. They're not just linear, but they're, um, um, yeah, um, but, you know, but that they, um, preserves the dot product and, he, or, you know, it sends whatever choice of inner product here to the dot product on our end. Okay. And so, uh, uh, the definition of Riemannian metric on a manifold is a, is a metric on the tangent bundle. So, you know, term tangent uh, metric and inner product, at least on vector spaces, I think are used, uh, or, you know, often used synonymously. And the, um, the uh, proposition is that, you know, if you have a vector bundle and your base is paracompact, maybe I should add Hausdorff, I don't know. Um, then, then they're always it, you can always pick a metric on the 
uh, you can always extend the vector bundle structure to a vector bundle with metric. Um, and you know the usual argument uses partitions of unity. Uh, okay, so sort of differential geometry gives you something called the exponential map. The exponential map is a map from the, um, the tangent bundle of M to M. Um, yeah, with, with the following properties, so that, the, that there's a um, function from the manifold to zero infinity, which is called the, uh, or the this function is often called the injectivity radius. Um, and the condition is that um, when you take the exponential map and you restrict it to the ball of radius epsilon um, and the tangent bundle, oh, oh yeah, so then so then the tangent, yeah, so this exponential map restricts to uh, an embedding of a ball of radius epsilon around zero in the tangent bundle um, to an you know, embedding into the manifold. And uh, also, it sends um, it sends zero to uh, your point. So here is zero means zero in the fiber in TM. Um, yeah, and so um, so what you do is um, basically so you you. Know, this is a picture like a v, a v, V is a point in the tangent bundle. And what you do is you sort of, you follow the, um, the straight line, you know, the geodesic in your manifold um, in the V direction, and you go a distance V. Um, and so what's gonna happen is like, maybe you're gonna follow, um, you know, so this exponential map gives you a map on all the, the tangent bundle. Um, and, you know, if you pick epsilon sort of small enough, it's going to map a, a disk in the tangent bundle to a disk in the manifold. But then if you pick like a really big epsilon, it might, um, the image might not be A disk. A terrible picture. Um, okay, so this is sort of. I, I don't know how, like how many of you took uh, the whatever the differential differential geometry differential manifolds class, but the, the you know, these are sort of basic things from that class. Uh, are there any questions? Um, yeah, so, I mean, intuitively, like if your manifold is embedded and you know, so here, like I've drawn this the surface in R three, and you know, you have this vector that like is tangent to the manifold, but you know, points from a point in the manifold to a point out of the manifold, we're sort of projecting it back down to the manifold. Okay. Um. Yeah, and then um, so what? What this this does? This construction lets you um, pick these ball these balls continuously. So we're going to going to let this disk bundle be the um, subspace of vectors of length one, and then the in the tangent bundle, and then the sphere bundle. Sorry, the disk bundle will be vectors of length less than or equal to one. The sphere bundle will be vectors of length equal to one, we know what length means in the tangent bundle because we pick a Riemannian metric on our manifold. And then this projection map will just come from the, exp um, the exponential map. Um, yeah, I guess um, 
and you just pick some number less than the injectivity radius. Um, I think I should be sort of parenthesizing it like this. Yeah, so, um, so sort of um, flowing along geo or you know, following geodesics gives you a way of identifying the uh, disk bundle with a small ball, or the disk, the fiber of the disk bundle at a point with a small ball with a manifold. Okay. So uh, now our goal is to construct a, um, a homotopy equivalent. So this is the scanning map we talked about earlier from configurations of points in M with labels in A the sections of this bundle. And so, um, yeah. So e uh, even if you somehow, or you know, no one's talking, so I assume I lost some portion of people in the discussion of how to construct this continuously varying family of disks, but let's just, you know, assume we have those. So what do we need to construct? Um, well, we, we want a map from configurations to sections. So given a point in M, um, we need a map from configurations to points in the fiber. Yeah, because what, what is S of a configuration? It's a section. So then you can plug in. Um, you know, so what does a section do? A section gives, given a point in the base, which is, the manifold, you get a point in the fiber. This is the fiber, so given a point in the manifold, we need a function from um, configurations of points in the manifold to um, to the fiber, and this is the fiber. So, you know, we need to build this map. Well, configurations of points in the disk rel sphere is the same thing as configurations of points in the manifold. Like rel means mod, mod, um, configurations of points in the manifold minus the interior. Um, yeah, this is sort of excision. Um, so now, now we just have this map. So, or what's the map? Well, con configurations of points in the manifold maps to configurations of points in the manifold um, minus or mod configurations of points in the manifold minus the interior of the disk around M. And then, um, you know, so here, here it's like points in the manifold, but they vanish if they leave the disk. Well, this is points in the disk that vanish if they hit the boundary sphere. So this is a, you know, we have this homeomorphism. Um, yeah, so this data defines a map like this. Yeah, so in pictures, what do we do? Um, you know, we're building a map from conf configurations to sections. So we pick a configuration, that's the black points. We pick one point in the manifold, that's this blue point. And then using differential geometry, we pick some ball around the manifold. And what do you do? You just record the points in your ball. Yeah, so maybe we picked this ball. Um, any questions on what this map is? Yeah, so then you get a section, you know, so it's called the scanning map because you, you vary this point M around your manifold and then you vary which ball you're look, looking at and you record, you basically record what happens at your configuration at each point as you vary the, your microscope and that gives you a section of this bundle. Okay. And someone should say they're completely lost or, or something. Or someone should say they're following it. I don't know. I found the, the differential geometry part uh, kind of confusing because I'm not very familiar with it. Um, 
but now that you have explained it with this picture, it you know, it's way better. Okay, yeah. So I mean, you could. I think you should sort of think, hey, if you know enough about manifolds, then there is a way of picking a ball around each point. That, that's you know the. Um, and then you know once you can pick a ball around each point, then you have this map, which is just this, this picture. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like assuming that I kind of trust the, the the first part, this part makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, that's good enough, I guess. Yeah. Okay, and then one person said in chat that they're following. Great. Okay. Um, yeah, so the I said we're going to want some version of Poincaré duality where the manifold has boundary, um, and we're going to sort of uh, work rel the boundary, but we can put part of the boundary on the homology side and part of the boundary on the cohomology side. Um, so what we're going to do is um, is prove that there's um, a homotopy equivalence from um, you know so X is going to be a subset. Yeah, so M will be a compact manifold with boundary. X is a subset of the boundary. Y is the complement of X in the boundary. So um, the slightly more general scanning map is going to go from configurations of points in M mod X. So you should think of maybe M as a cylinder and X is like one boundary circle and Y is the other boundary circle. And then this is going to go to sections. Um, but now the sections need some, had to you know, somehow know about Y. And what is, what is this? The, um, what is sections rel Y of a bundle? So... Um, this is defined for bundles that have a, a canonical section, but so in this case, the definition is just going to be these are sections, um, and that they require that we're going to map points in Y to the empty configuration. So you know, a um, fibers of this bundle are configurations of points in a disk around the boundary. So um, you know, um, the, the base point in the configuration space we're going to pick is just the empty configuration. And so this is the space of sections that map um, all points in Y to the base point. And, you know, if you believe, you know, I guess I, the same argument that proves, you know, high I of mapping spaces is is cohomology, if you, you know, think about it enough, it will prove that the sections rel y give you relative cohomology. So if we can prove this sort of very general statement, then when you take homotopy groups, you get this, um, you get Poincaré duality. Okay. And the, the way we're going to prove this is we're going to sort of induct up um, manifold cells. And then we're going to use the you know long exact sequence of homotopy groups associated to vibrations and quasi-fibrations, and then the, the five lemma. Okay, so what's a handle? A J handle is um, a J disk cross an N minus J disk. So here we're sort of M is an N manifold, and we're suppressing N from the notation. Um, you know, it's an N manifold with, with boundary. And then we say that um, uh, N is M with a J handle attached along a map. Uh, if N is um, M disjoint union, um, the handle mod this equivalence relation where we identify points in the handle along the image, or sorry, we allow po identify points on the boundary of the handle along, identify them with their image in this attaching map. Um, yeah, so this should should be reminiscent of uh, CW complexes. And, uh, you know, the theorem is that if you have a compact smooth manifold with boundary, then you can build M 
out of the empty set by um, iterated handle attachments. Um, yeah, oh, so I'm going to like talk about this picture before asking for questions. OK, so what do we start out with here? We have the empty set. And then we're attaching, I think this is a zero dimensional handle. Uh, let's say this is a zero dimensional handle. It's possible that this is a two handle. Um, it's sort of arbit you know, it's arbitrary if you're counting this, this J or N minus J. Uh, okay, so yeah, so you start out with the empty set, then you attach a two dimensional handle, you get this. Then you attach a one-dimensional handle, you know, so you, we have a, a bowl, and then you attach a one-dimensional handle, and that gives you a, a basket. And then the basket is homeomorphic to, like, half a torus. And then, um, then you attach uh, another one handle, and... Um, then you get like a torus minus a disc, or you know, I don't know what. I have a wine decanter that looks like this. I don't drink wine, but I thought it was cool. I don't know. Um, then you get your wine decanter, and then you attach a two handle, which just glues on a, a disc up here, and then you built the torus. Um, yeah, so all of these handles like are topologically just a closed end disk. But you know, we're thinking of them um, but we're sort of, you know, attack like when we're attaching a one handle. There's something in chat, I should look at chat. We, att we attach one handles along um, like this kind of boundary, but then we attach two handles along like this kind of boundary. Yeah, so they're they're all end disks, but we're uh, attaching them in different ways. There's something in chat. Okay, I saw that already. Yeah, any. Questions? So you, um, um, people should read like Milner's Morse theory. And then like that has a nice proof that, um, um, that, you know, if you have smooth manifolds, you can find a handle decomposition. Um, oh yeah, so then the next comment is that if you're attaching, um, that if you build N out of M by attaching a J handle, then that's homotopy equivalent to attaching like a J cell in the sense of CW complexes. So what's the idea? Well, we started with the empty set and now we're attaching zero cells. So it's like attaching a point. Well, up to homotopy, you know, this, this disc, this bowl thing is just that point. Now we attach a one handle. Well, up to homotopy, that's just like attaching a circle, which is like attaching a one cell. Then we attach another one hand handle. Uh, this picture is a little bit harder because I think it has to go around the back. But you know, then you get a wedge of two circles, so you just attach one cell, and then um, and then now we finally glue on this disk, and this has the effect of attaching a uh, two cell. Okay. Um, any questions? Yeah, so like this is the sort of correct analog of CW complex in the category of, of manifolds. And in particular, up to homotopy, it's the same thing as just um, building your manifold as a CW complex. OK, so uh, the way we're going to prove um, Poincaré duality, we're going to basically prove it for handles, and then we're going to induct up handle, up uh, handle decomposition. 
yeah. So, um, so yeah. So y is going to be a handle. X is going to be the boundary of a handle. Um, and so what point gray duality for the handles should mean is that this configuration space of points in the handle Uh, okay, this typo. What I, I want this to be. Oh, wait. I want this to be. I have no idea what I wrote. Okay. Here. Handle. Y is the boundary of the handle. Oh. What? Um, okay. Part of the problem. So I have this fear that like my daycare is going to close at any point due to coronavirus. And then I like try to get a week and a half ahead on making these slides. So I don't have to make slides without childcare. And then I forget what's in the slides. Um, Okay, so I think I know what's. So yeah, okay, so yeah, so the, the the whole thing is the handle, and then part of the boundary is y, and then the other part of the boundary is x. And so, um, you know, the uh, space level plunker, x is. The, so, uh, you know, and then the whole thing is H. Uh, so what we want is that uh, configurations of points in H mod A of Y is the same thing as sections of this bundle. Maybe this M should be an H. Um, rel X. Okay. So like, yeah, that's, this is the correct statement we want for handles. And then we'll glue, uh, you know, then we'll use this in induction arguments. One thing to say is, I guess this is slightly more general. This is a slightly more general version of Poincaré duality. Um, because it's the boundary is a union of X and Y, but it's not a different union. Okay. So yeah, this is, this is, what we want. Uh, so let's see what the configuration space side is. So like A of the handle mod Y. Is like, it's like a cylinder or oh, sorry. It's like a, a cube, or, you know, I guess for a one handle. It would be like you have a, a square and you're taking rel top and bottom. So we want that this is a homotopy equivalence. And what is the configuration space side? So it's um, points in the square, rel the top and the bottom of the square. Um, and then what this is saying is, hey, you can um, configure, you know, configurations of points in a square, rel the top and bottom of the square is the same thing as configurations of points in interval rel the top and the bottom of the interval. Because you can you can collapse in the horizontal direction. Um, so you just get configurations in a J disk rel the boundary of the J disk, um, which I guess, you know, if you don't like bar constructions, you can forget about bar constructions. Um, so yeah, so we just get configurations of points in the J disk. And we'll leave that. People should like bar constructions. Okay. Rel the boundary of the J disk. Okay, so this is what we get on the configuration space side. And then let's see what happens on the section space side. So um, yeah, so we want that configurations uh, in the handle, rel boundary of the handle, which is just the uh, this J fold bar construction on A, is homotopy equivalent to the section space. So the um, tangent bundle is trivial. Um, for um, I, you, know, you can prove that all vector bun all bundles over 
contractible spaces are tr trivial. You know, it's, in particular, you can see that the you know, the tangent bundle of a square is trivial. That's something you can see fairly geometrically. So then you just get maps from. So this section space is just maps from x from h rel um, rel x into um, into this space. I guess it's base maps. Um, that's what this relative section space is. It's just base maps in this pair. Or I guess I should say it's maps from here, rel base point. I guess the base point will be empty configuration. Yeah. I won't name the base point. Okay. Um, oh, I fixed that mistake. Okay. So zero is a good name. So maps, uh, this mapping space, uh, you know, so it's like maps from a J disk across an N minus J disk, rel a J disk, Across the sphere into this space. Well, the this J disk part is um, irrelevant up to homotopy. You can sort of collapse in that direction, and then you just get maps from a J disk rel its boundary into this um, BNA. Um, so you get um, loops n minus J BNA, and so what we said was that loops. And um, this um, bar construction cancel. Um, and you just get A back. So what this B thing does is it shifts homotopy groups in one direction, loops shifts homotopy groups in the other direction. So we're uh, shifting homotopy groups by N in one way, and then by N minus J the other way. So we end up just shifting by J. So that's what we wanted. We wanted this. Yeah, um, we want this as homotopy equivalent to that, and they're both just homotopy equivalent to this BJA space, which is the same thing as configurations of points in a J disk rel the boundary. So that's the, um, the proof for handles, and. Um, Okay, and then the, the proof in general is you just um, it's like a five lemma argument. Okay, so what? Let me just draw a picture. Fifteen minutes left. So great. Okay, so this is M, and then. Then we have we have H, and then the whole thing is N. Yeah. So what we do is we're we're, we're um, M is going to or N is going to be M with a J handle attached, and our our argument is going to be a proof by induction. So we're going to assume we know the theorem for M. We want to prove it for n. We already know the theorem for handles because we proved the theorem for handles. So uh, you can look at, you can map configurations of points in M into configurations of points in N, right? Because M is a subspace of N. And then the, the quotient by excision is configurations of points in the handle, but you know, so. I guess this this space typing. This space, you know, you could think of uh, like naturally should be a m mod a um, m minus sorry, this is naturally a n modulo a um and minus m. But that's, you know, the same thing. By excision, that's the same thing as points in the uh, 
um, points in the handle rel, the, um, yeah. you know, rel y. You know, y is the, the green part of the handle. Okay, so modulo the fact that like our proof of the, that this was a quasi-fibration was slightly flawed, but you know, the left-hand side is a, is a quasi-fibration. And then you can do a sort of similar thing on the right. If you have a, um, let's say, let's say, okay, you have a section of, um, the bundle over, um, so here we have sections of the tangent bundle of M that agree with the base point, you know, that, that send the boundary of M to the base point. Well, you can sort of extend by the base point the sections of um, the uh, sections of this uh, bundle over all of N. You know, you take your section, use that in the M part, and you just send everything in N to the base point. And so you, know, this map wouldn't exist except we're taking um, sections that. Maybe I want this to be N. Uh, the sections are the uh, uh, send the boundary map to the base point. And then if you look at, oh yeah, and then um, okay, so what's the boundary of N? The boundary of N the boundary of N is like the red region, which is X. And then I'm running out of colors. And then the rest of the boundary of M is this, is the yellow. Yeah, so the sec sections here are, um, agree with the base point um, on the yellow and the red. So if you like just sort of restrict to the handle, you're gonna get sections that are the base point um, in the red region, and uh, the so you know the left hand side is a quasi fibration, the right hand side is a fibration, and by induction we know this maps a weak equivalence, and we proved this maps a weak equivalence. Weak equivalence means iso on homotopy groups. Um, yeah, and then so you just look at the long exact sequence of homotopy groups and use the five lemma, and it will just say that the middle map induces an isomorphism on homotopy groups. So that's um, that's the whole proof, or you know, this is at least all of the proof I'm planning on giving of Poincaré duality. So yeah, and then you know you can specialize to A is Z manifold is orientable and it's compact, and then you just get that you know and take homotopy groups and you just get that homology. I homology is n minus i cohomology if it's orientable. Okay, I don't have anything else to say. Are there any questions? I'm going to stop the recording.